Hello everyone, and welcome to Drake Makes. Last time we built a new and improved facility level, making use of some of the most basic features of Horror Engine. Today we're going to experiment with event triggers in the project, just to see what tools I have at my disposal, along with some more straight up level design. So let's dig in. Event triggers can be used to do pretty much anything. Play a sound, kill the light, slam a door, update your quest journal, all kinds of crazy options. We're going to explore some of those today. First, I connected all of the lights to the switches so that players can actually turn them on and off. This is done by adding these button blueprints and adding an array element that samples the light you want to be able to control. You can parent one button to as many lights as you want, so I did a pass through the lights I had already set up and acted like an electrician for a bit. The button blueprints have extra options to act as event triggers themselves, which could be useful for hiding scares. Now the reason I'm setting all of these switches up is so that they can be interacted with via event trigger. This way I can have the lights just shut off when the player trips the trigger, like some ghost flipped the switch. I'll demonstrate how to achieve this in a little bit. But first, we're expanding the room with a new hallway. This is where modular assets really come in handy, because it's easy to make adjustments like this on the fly. Since they all just kind of fit together, it doesn't look too out of place once a new doorway's been cut in. set up an electric door that is paired to a keypad scanner. This is basically identical to a regular locked door, but instead of a key, you need a key card. All courtesy of Horror Engine. Now I copy over the frame of a room I made a couple days ago and use this to build another office. And inside this room with the window, I gotta say, I love how the lighting turned out. auto exposure so I can just stay in a regular lit mode, but for some reason with each video on this project I forget to do that. Anyways. Now with this room getting its finishing touches, I want to start adding some spooky events. First, let's have a ghost shut and lock a door. To do this, I set up an overlap trigger in the desired location and click Add Horror Event. Under this, you want to set the interaction to Overlap with Trigger and set up the timing to like 0.01 seconds so the trigger is basically instant. Now we choose what type of interaction this is. In this case, I choose lock, so it will automatically close the door. Then I just parent it to the door like I would a button to the lights, and that's literally it. Instant paranormal activity. Here's me testing that out really quickly. With 
that all set up, let's make another event. This time, let's have a ghost turn out the lights. So I just set up an overlap trigger identical to the last one, but instead of pairing it to a door, I paired it to one of the light switches we've gotten set up. There's a bunch of extra tweaks you can make for when a horror event triggers. You can add like a fear effect and sound effects, but right now I want to keep things simple and subtle. So here's all that in action, full demonstration at the end of the video. And now, back to some level building. All of this is subject to change. Today we're just figuring out how these event triggers work. I'm sure you can start to imagine how by using a mix of well-placed triggers, how you can quickly begin to orchestrate complex chain events. I'm really only scratching the surface here today. It's at this point I need to start writing and planning out actual sequences so I can figure out how to sneakily hide the triggers so it all feels like a seamless sequence. For the rest of the video, we're expanding this main research hall. While it was big before, I still felt like it was feeling too cramped. So I add in three more of the new research stations and had to really stretch my brain to figure out how to use the assets I have to create three more unique scenes. This was a fun kind of creative problem though. Be sure to stick around until the end to see a walkthrough. I worked on all three of these demonstration areas simultaneously. I'm still familiarizing myself with new asset packs, so I'm jumping around quite a bit. Based around these concentric rings, I kitbashed together some big machine with a platform for test subjects in front of it. I don't really know what it does yet, but the silhouette is at least interesting to look at. They don't serve any purpose right now, but I added some interactable valves on this big machine. By clicking on them, you'll make them turn. It gave it some character. Here I put the finishing touches on the final square we're adding today. Right now I've been marking the location of keys with red cups. I don't know why, but it's just what I've been doing. From here on, just a couple more finishing touches. With this extension to the research facility complete, here's a walkthrough of some of the new details. Enjoy!
And that is this week's progress. Slowly but surely, this seems to be turning into something. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and subscribe if you did, and I will see you next time with more creative content coming soon.